You know, we have a new reason to hate the Islanders. A new reason? Well, it's not the stuff they threw at Tavares. That was years ago. That's a good reason, but an old reason. I don't know, something Lou Lamorello, old rivalry? No, everyone's missing it. It's so obvious and it's borderline unforgivable. Then tell me, what is the new reason to hate the New York Islanders? They might be the reason the Buffalo Sabres make the playoffs. Oh! Let's go! Give me what I want! Kick down the door! Drew, you are not doing this! What the <laughs> Not nice! There's a giant hit! <laughs> I made like 2,000 of these, I'd like to have fun. With you, wherever you are, welcome to LFR. Victory, puppy Ziggy! The Leafs slide five past the Islanders. Huh? They, they, they crawled their way back into that game. Huh? They, they really slithered away. They slithered. Do you know what slithered? They slithered. Get it? Because snakes, Leafs win! Five to two over the New York Islanders. A game that looked like it was gonna be all New York Islanders. And it evened up a bit, it evened up a lot, and then it wasn't even close. Let's talk about it, but first, think you know which way it's gonna go? Well then you can make your bet at Sports Interaction. Two dollar Steve wishes he put two bucks on John Tavares, that would have been smart. When the puck drops, Sports Interaction has you covered pre-game, live betting on all major sports and prop bets. Wanna bet? Head to sportsinteraction.com slash sdpn or download the app, brand new on the App Store, 19 plus though, Please play responsibly. Now this is going to be a video mostly focusing on the Leafs, but I did enjoy this comment that I got on Twitter. David said, I took my buddy to his first Islanders game tonight. Could you do an If I Were You segment for him? Now, if you're wondering why an Islanders fan might need an If I Were You segment talking about their team and trying to make them feel better, have you been paying attention to the Islanders? I wasn't kidding at the beginning of the video. Like, they're falling off hard. This from Kevin Papetti is nasty. The Canucks, that was a Freudian slip. The Islanders have now lost five straight. They're two, seven, and three since January 1st with wins against Montreal and Vancouver. For those of you who don't understand the implication of Kevin's tweet, beating Montreal is supposed to be easy. Every team has their weird little quirks. But since January 1st, the Islanders have won two out of 12 games, and both of those wins were against teams well out of the playoff picture. The Islanders' mediocrity last year could be fairly easily explained, or at least somewhat excused. I said it before, I'll say it again. They faced Tampa Bay in back-to-back -back Eastern Conference Finals, arguably the New York Islanders, during those two years where Tampa won back-to-back -back cups, were the second best team in hockey, which is pretty good, except you don't win the cup. Win a few rounds though, can I have that? Is that available? Then the Islanders start 40 games consecutive on the road. I think it was actually 13, but it was awful. And they did not do very good on that season opening road trip. And they were never really able to get their footing underneath them. They sort of came on in the second half and Ilya Sorokin was incredible, but it was all for naught because the Islanders were so far out of the playoff picture. But then this team that at the best of times wasn't very good at scoring gets this new coach and oh look at that, if we can just keep the same defensive structure and we know we're gonna get saves back there and if we can score a little bit more, look out, the Islanders are back. And for most of the season, the most kind way you could describe them is upper middle of the pack. A more accurate way to describe them is middle of the pack. In a playoff spot, but middle of the pack, like wild card. But now that they've won only two of their last 12 games, they are plummeting out of the playoff picture. And because Pittsburgh hasn't been that great either, the Sabres on their little hot streak are rocketing up and they might just get the second wild card spot before long. And actually, I didn't know this until mid rant. I just checked the standings. It's bad news. The Islanders are one of three teams tied with 51 points in the Eastern Conference. And because of regulation wins or lack thereof, they are third out of those three teams. Even worse, none of those three teams are currently in a playoff spot. The Buffalo Sabres are the closest. They're three points back of the Penguins. Then there's the Florida Panthers who have also been hot and then it's the Islanders. Now here's what's interesting Islanders fans because I've seen a lot of Islanders fans seem to do something. Lou Lamorello has never done something because you told him to. What Lou Lamorello did with the Leafs when he was here because I don't think he expected the Leafs to be as good as they were as quickly as they were but what he did every year is he would quote unquote reward the team 
by going out and getting someone at the trade deadline to help this team. Like, no, I don't necessarily think you're a Stanley Cup contender, but you've done well enough that I'd like to get you some help so you can gain some playoff experience. Here's a little bit of Brian Boyle for you. Here's probably too much for not very much of Thomas Buchanan, who was actually pretty good in the series. They lost! Islanders fans, with the way things are trending right now, do you think Lou is going to reward the team? Lou Lamorello is only going to make a move to improve the New York Islanders now if he thinks it's going to improve them later. And let's say they squeak into that second wild card spot somehow. Do you think Lou Lamorello thinks the Islanders can beat the Bruins? Like they have an honest chance? In fairness, I guess he, he probably didn't think Brian Boyle was gonna allow the Leafs to win a series against the President's Trophy when he watched the Capitals back in the day. Usually these if I were you bits are supposed to be like reassuring. Islanders fans, I have no idea what to tell you because I have no idea what the plan is because your general manager is Lou Lamorello! But also the Islanders who I still wouldn't want to run into in a playoff series. I don't really think anyone does. They seem like a very not fun time, even if they are not quite what they were a few years ago, but they also weren't overwhelmingly spectacular in the regular season a few years ago. What the heck are the New York Islanders? I think Islanders fans are just wondering what to do with their hopes because like, okay, are they the team that we know is going to turn it on when it matters most? Or are they just kind of, you know, mid? A couple years ago, I know what my answer would have been. This year, ooh, it's looking like mid. What would I do if I were you? Keep an eye on some of the big trade deadline targets that are out there. The Tarasenko's of the world, he was rumored to be out there. Also, maybe watch some Regina Pats games. That's what I would do if I were you. This game started great for the Islanders too. They were running the Leafs out of their own building, which is odd and shouldn't happen. But Ilya Samsonov, who was in the net for this game, he's officially the Leafs starter for the time being, I guess. He held them in until Zach Aston Reese, now on the fourth line, did this weird diagonal pass straight into the corner, which is a perfect run of the mill normal play. If anyone is expecting it to happen, which obviously no one was, and the puck bounced off the corner perfectly, and the Islanders fly the other way. The Leafs never quite recover from it. Steve, what do you mean by that? I mean, look at this! Look at the, look at this! They're all back, and none of them seem sure of what to do. Anders Lee's wide open for the rebound, scores, and that's how we head into intermission in a great mood! Second period, this will put me in a great mood. John Tavares reunited with William Nylander. Sheldon, what are you up to? JT drops it for Willie, and he snipes it! That was wasn't even the best moment. The best moment was the celebration because John Tavares is a goal scoring assist making robot. The entire arena is losing their minds behind them and Tavares is literally just like whispering words of encouragement while hugging William Nylander. The goal horn is still going off when this photo was taken. I love him. I just love him. And later in the game I'm gonna love him even more. And it's 1-1. Until not long after, kind of a bummer amount of time after, Anders Lee scores again. And this time again it appears to be a little bit of running around. Connor Timmons goes for, I don't, I don't know if you can call it a pinch because it's in his own end, but he goes for the puck and he doesn't come up with it. It's okay because Mitch Marner is in support and the Islanders don't really have any other attacking players going to the net and if they do choose to do that, Connor Timmons will just fill in or one of the forwards will fill in. It's all fine. Rasmus Sandy doesn't pick up on that. He's like, I gotta guard the front of the net. No one's here at the front of the net. Not even Anders Lee. Wait, where's Anders Lee? He's over there! Get him over there! He doesn't get him there in time. Lee blasts it. It's a goal. 2-1 Isles. Then the Leafs get a power play and I like when the Leafs get a power play. I don't like when the goalie plays the puck though. You might have noticed that I have that little that phrase that I sometimes I whisper. I believe it's something along the lines of if you're a goaltender kill the goal! And I've said many times many ways Ilya Samsonov for as much as I like him as a goaltender Boy, I really hate it every time he plays the puck. He's a great goalie, a funny goalie, a happy goalie. He has some smile, but he's he's going to, I'm. you see all the gray? It's gonna be more. Because he, the goalie, leaving his net, facing the end boards in his own end, decided, you know what? I could create a scoring chance out of this. And then he ended up being right! Spins and fires. Dude, a, a defenseman does that, you bench them. Spins and fires a laser beam up the ice to William Nylander who just sort of yeah, like pool cues it over the line. Tavares like barely onside. We're talking like a hair of his skate blade was onside. If he had sharpened his skates the shift before he would have been offside. We're talking that close. But he gets in, perfectly onside, perfectly legal. John Tavares has never done anything wrong! Backhand, oof. It's a tie game 2-2. 
And it's worth mentioning, once again, Kevin Papetti, thank you. The Leafs started off with back-to-back -back losses against the Islanders after acquiring John Tavares, but they're 5-0-1 since the start of 2020. Love that. Love that a lot. Love that. What's even more strange about that is the, in that 5-0-1, like Michael Hutchinson and I, I want to say Eric Shelgren as well, like they both got shutouts. The Islanders can't score against this team or anyone. And then it ramps up. You want to see where William Nylander passed a puck from? This is where he passed a puck from. He's in his own zone. You want to see the next slide? This is where the puck landed. This is why I love the Goofy Leafs and, and the chemistry that is built with these players. Like, how do you, how do you see William Nylander? How do you see any player? Forget that it's William Nylander. How do you see a player arc a floater from like your own end and be like, this is gonna work out. This is gonna be great. I should fully commit to this. I'm, I'm about to get a breakaway. You shouldn't do that because they're not gonna pull it off, but the Leafs pull it off all the time. Regularly finding their way behind the Islanders. Yarn Croak snipe on Sorokin. Leafs get their first lead of the game, 3-2. Michael Bunting, breakaway. Ah, it doesn't score, but they're humming. And then William Nylander, this was mean William. You all, you all didn't name him to the all-star team and he said yeah okay all right it's like before the second period sheldon keefe was like none of the islanders voted for you and willie was like <gasps> islanders try to clear the puck no i'm a selkie finalist i think your uncle might vomit if that happened anyway i don't know where i was going with that but i like william nylander very much nice defensive play takes the shot scores a goal like that very much four points in the second period the leafs are up four two and to give you an idea of how much of a shot the islanders had in the third period this from justin hall is a primary assist. That is a primary assist. If you're uh, listening to this in your car or something, uh, he's behind his own goal line. He banked it off the boards perfectly, perfectly on Austin Matthews' stick, like your friend who's never played pool before and somehow got it on the first try. And you're like, who is this guy? Is he a shark? And then you watch him do it again and he's not a shark. He's not, he's not, but he did it once. And oh my goodness, Matthews finishes that because he had to, kinda. And it's 5-2. And were you ever really scared? No? No. Leafs win. This question made me laugh. Does it matter if we don't start on time as long as we finish strong? Listen, I think the Leafs outplayed their opponent in each of the last two games. They outplayed the Islanders and won. Uh, they just didn't outplay them in the first. And they outplayed the Montreal Canadiens and lost. They just didn't outplay them in the second. Summarily, or whatever the word, don't make me think hard words, uh, the Leafs played the same amount of good hockey, 40 minutes, which isn't great. But if you're the better team, 40 minutes out of 60, you should expect to win most games. It's just a matter of leaving no doubt. When you leave doubt, you leave the door open for someone like Sam Montembeau to have an incredible game, which he did, and then you leave a point on the table that you didn't need to. But they did light up a dude who's legitimately gonna get Vesna votes, so that's pretty cool. Nowadays, could you argue that the Leafs getting rid of Lou was a good decision and would the Islanders benefit from doing the same? That that blew my mind to read because there's a little bit of revisionist history here. Like again, remember, the Leafs have not won a playoff series since 2004 and most notably recently, it's been extremely frustrating with all the first round losses. The New York Islanders made it to the Eastern Conference Final in back-to-back -back years and they made the second round, if I'm not mistaken, Immediately, like Lou's first year there. I think he's great for coming in and establishing a culture and establishing a certain type of professionalism. But man, his hockey decisions sure are weird sometimes. But he loves a big trade. He loves a big trade. And I think it would be a shame for his tenure with the New York Islanders to end without him taking a big swing. Just a go for it, man. Out of nowhere, announce nothing. Well, I don't want to hint that it's coming. And don't trade Devon Taves for two seconds, especially, but don't trade him. Underratedly though, and I'm saying this in January so I can hold myself accountable in the spring, although things might change by the spring, no matter what happens in these playoffs, I think the Leafs should sign Dubas if he's willing to stay. Dude, uh, a, most of his trades I would say have worked. Some haven't, obviously. A lot of his signings have been pretty clever. And we're starting to see now, because it was too early before, but we're starting to see a lot of his draft picks hit. 
He's kind of good at this. Dude, Bobby McMahon is in the lineup and looking good. You know where the Leafs drafted him? They didn't. He found him. A big part of the return for Jack Campbell was Trevor Moore. You know where the Leafs drafted him? They didn't. He found him. I think both general managers were maybe the right guy for their teams at the time. And I love this one. I'm going to end on this one. When you started learning how to play ice hockey as an adult, what was the first move you tried properly that impressed you in terms of your progress? I started playing at a local rink at the beginning of the month with my brother and it's been amazing so far. Okay, I have two answers. One, I'm actually able to pull off when I'm playing and the other, I'm only able to pull off when I'm uh, practicing. Uh, when I'm practicing, I'm amazed like just uh, toe dragging it, just getting it up on the, on the toe, bringing it back. And then I was amazed when I was able to do it multiple times in a row without completely losing it and sending it into the corner. And then a guy steps on it and he breaks his ankle and it's your fault. Doing it mid stride, well, that's, that's another story, but it's fun, it feels cool. And just the ultimate game changer. Uh, I, I feel like playing hockey forces you to learn how to stop if you didn't know before, but definitely pivoting. It, when, once you learn how to pivot, especially if you learn how to do it with both feet, oh my god, what a game changer. It's so much more fun. Like, a lot of it was, okay, I'm really trying to make this work here, but I'm not gonna lie, it wasn't always fun. The second you learn how to pivot on both sides, oh, life. Life is easier, the sun is brighter, smells are nicer smelling. Hockey's great. Oh, hockey's great. I'm not, but hockey's great. So, that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends. I'll see you at the Leafs game against the Rangers on Wednesday.